back to the desk. This is the third part of the Vertigo build. This is the Vertigo frame, the VX5 from iFlight. Um, you can find it located in the description below. Uh, once again, welcome back. What we're going to do today, we well, what we talked about already was uh, the frame. Uh, then we went and built it. Uh, I installed already 2205, 2500 kV ion drive motors. Uh, you can also find these also on iFlight. Uh, I think you can also find them on the Nadici website, located on Amazon. Find them all over the web, pretty much. Uh, today we're going to install the race cam. Uh, not a bad little camera. Uh, it comes with a little OSD remote. You can set up your settings and do all that fun stuff once you're in the air. Uh, what else? Uh, for a flight controller, I have the Poseidon. It's a uh, 4-in-1 ESC, 25 amp ESC, and an F4 processor with an OSD. Here I have the uh, XM Plus receiver for the FR Sky remote. Uh, on the sides here, I don't know if you can see those ports. Yeah, I totally can. Uh, they're normal 4-pin ports. Uh, they used to be the ones on the... SP Racing F3 boards, a few other boards, normal, positive, negative, uh, uh, signal in, signal out kind of pads. Uh, underneath these connections, I don't know if you can quite see, do you see those solder pads right there, those little brass pads? Well, if you don't want to use the ports given with the plugs, you can solder in the wires individually. On all four ports which was pretty cool um, one is for RX1 the other one is for beeper and LEDs um, the one below uh, is RX6 and the other one I believe is for SCL in those ports um, so what we're gonna do is get this wired up there's not a lot of space to use. I'm going to be using this VTX here. This being the tail of it. That's going to sit like that. But we got to fit all the wires in there as well. I do have this ran with LEDs. And normal LED hookup. Positive negative signal. 5 volt. Uh, the thing that's different is, is that it's an LED port. So you use one of these four that, that are given. You'll see it in the description. I'll post a picture of the wiring diagram. And uh, let's get into it. Okay. I went ahead and pre-gamed and built most of it, I do admit. Uh, it was a little bit to figure out the right configuration to get everything wired in and happy. But once I did, you can see it came out really nice. Really clean build. Okay, so we were talking about the ports down here. Basically, the one closest to the USB is for your OSD and for your camera setup. Video in, video out. Okay? And I got this little wiring harness here made up. Positive negative to the VTX. VTX supplying video and 5 volt out. This is for the on-screen display remote for the camera itself. And this plug here is for the camera. Alright. So, it's going to be a kind of tight build. That's why I bent these wires straight back over. Just applied a little heat. And it worked out nice. So, this is what I kind of like about this board. There's not a lot of soldering to do. Alright. There you go. Your on-screen display, camera wires are all connected. These wires here, they are for the LED and for the beeper. They go right next to the on-screen display wires and above RX1. Let me just take this, flip it over.
If you have any extra wires, what I like to do is uh, twist them. Twist them up. Kind of chews up. Eats up some of that extra space there. And they just push right in real nice. Nice and clean. Next thing we're going to do here is solder the positive and negative wires. I'm not quite sure I need this many wires, this much wire. See, this is going to have to come around like that. Yeah, we'll leave the wire. So let's go ahead and solder these things in. It's already been pre tin. Um, never hurt to throw a little more on there. So let's do that real quick. Positive in there. Now the Poseidon doesn't have a 12 volt out. Um, it has a 5 volt out, a 3 volt out. So I just connect this right up to the battery. Um, if I had more space, I'd put it to a voltage regulator, dial that into about 10 volts. But this will work just fine. All right. And there it is, pretty much all wired up already. I'm going to uh, shut off my soldering gun. Let me clean this up real quick. Yeah, that works. That's off. That goes over there. Take a little sippy sippy. Cheers, guys. Again, thanks for sticking around with me. Like, subscribe, share, ask questions. Um, I'll answer as much as I can, let's say. All right. Well, from here, I have my XM Plus on the bottom. That sits pretty square, and it's short enough that it'll stay below the standoffs. The wires, on the other hand, they need to do a little jog back and forth, so... We can get those to wire up, to sit out like that. If I can get those to sit just like that, that'd be great. Next, you add the VTX. This VTX is switchable from zero power wise all the way up to 800 or 600 milliwatts I believe it's 600 uh, great VTX uh, plenty of power signal seems to be pretty true uh, this is where it gets tricky it may pause it so you don't have to watch me screw these things in there's not a lot of room to do this I wish I had a nut driver so hint to anybody watching, if you have an extra nut driver and you want to send it to me, hit me up. There we go. We got one in. This is the hardest part of the build is getting these nylon nuts to lock in. Because you're dealing with the aluminum space, the aluminum uh, structure and the space given in between. Yeah. What I was saying about this VTX is that you can switch it via your remote if you program a switch to work off of the S-Bus channel on this. This is not a smart audio or a Tramp VTX. It works off the S-Bus off of a, a separate channel. Uh, you set that up on your controller, then you reset it up on Betaflight, and then you can switch channels, or switch power levels of your VTX. The other one, the red one of the Force 5804 uh, VTX, is you can change the channel, and I believe there's a third one, or V3 of it, that uses the smart port technology, smart audio technology. Alright, so, from here... You got two of those nuts in. Here's a third one. I don't know where the fourth one went. It's probably in the craft somewhere. There we go. 
See, that wasn't so painful. Basically, out the front of the craft here, you're going to have your VTX wiring harness that goes right in. Curls back. Come on, baby. And that goes in, no problem. This is your camera wires right here. They don't have to go too far. And this is your RX wires. Alright. On screen display wire. I'm going to tuck that in so it sticks out the side over here. So when the time does come, and if I do need it, I can just pop out the little remote control that came with it. Ooh. You can fit through there. Let's see where are my little pliers? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what happens. It doesn't go through, no biggie, no love loss there. This is just a tryout. It looks like it might fit if I just get it to wiggle. Wiggle and go in the right direction. And like I said, it's kind of a tight fit, but I think I can get it to go. Again, somebody else will probably just look at this and be like, uh, dude, go this way. So, so be it. We can always go over. We don't have to go under every time. Alright. So with that sticking out the side, here is the race cam. See on the back, positive, negative. Wires only go in basically one way. Can't really mess that up. Pins up, pins up. It shuts in there. So, I pulled it out. And this is why I appreciate you guys sticking with me through this. I know some of the stuff is kind of painful, but at least you see that you're not crazy when you go through problems. All right. It locks in like that and sit up like this. Let's see how pretty that puppy is. Now, as far as the lid goes, I went ahead and screwed everything together on that. The VTX has a removable MMCX connector, which makes it wicked handy for when you're always tinkering. Uh, I go ahead and move my VTX, my uh, RX antennas up through the F. Little signature thing I do. I can get it to go. Up through the F. And then I get this one to go through the H. Oh, oh that's the T. Up through, oh, missed it again. Right up through the H. Come on. A little finagling, but it goes. Again, I'd like to thank iFlight out for uh, sending out the frame, sending out the parts to me. Nothing good things to say about the customer service and the quality of their their builds over there. It really blows me away. All right.
And there you have it. You can get some screws in here. Finish this thing off. I don't know if I said anything about the screws in the other builds. These are the screws. These are going to be the six, uh, six millimeter M3 screws. They are nickel plated. Uh, pretty heavy duty. Haven't had one strip out on me yet. Actually, what I have had is my Allen keys stripping out, which is always fun. But four screws later, and we're all built. Tomorrow should be the maiden for this. I still got to calibrate my controller and do all that fun stuff. Tightens down. those countersunk holes everything sits nice and flush I love it you put the battery on top put the battery on bottom I like to keep the top free in case I get a GoPro on there but let's see how that goes in the future Yeah. Last thing to do, plug in power to the VTX, or plug in the antenna to the VTX. Alright, let's plug some power into this and see what happens. This is just a big ass 3S battery I got. Use it as a test battery, use it as a bench battery, use it in my 500. Alright, so we plug it in and... We have life. The lights, in case you were wondering, I also got those on the high plate website. Uh, they are programmable LEDs. <coughs> they come in strips. These ones are the six strip. They came in a nice little piece of uh, clear uh, uh, heat shrink. Uh, three wire hookup, positive and negative signal, five volt. I took all four pairs and I made it all the ends, stuffed them in there, and then hooked them up to the LED port on the side of the Poseidon flight controller. The LEDs look like this when they come in the bag. Little wiring harnesses for each one of them. If you can see that, yeah, little wiring harnesses for each one of them. Little explanation on where to plug in, how to plug in. Beta flight, you go ahead and plug your flight controller in. You can program, do any color pattern you want. Again, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this is the Vertigo VX5 210 millimeter frame from iFlight. Uh, one of their newest frames, four millimeter arms, two millimeter body construction. Uh, motors are 2205, 2500 kV. The ion drives. Check out the little windings in there if you want to see anything else. I don't know how focused that is. Poseidon flight controller. 25 amp 4 in 1 BL Heli S ESCs running D Shot 600. Uh, flight controller will be running beta flights 3.23. Um, it says to use the Omnibus 
target, the Omnibus F4 target. I programmed it with the Omnibus SD, F4 SD target. Uh, we'll see how that holds up. Once again, thanks for watching. If there's any questions, go ahead and ask. If you like the video, click like. And if you want to show somebody else or tell them about the Vertigo frame, go right ahead and share it with them. If you're looking for a frame or a camera or motors or the flight controllers or the, the antennas, any of that stuff, you can go right on the iFlight website and go through their category list, and I'm sure you'll find something to suit your needs. Thanks again. Have a wonderful evening. Cheers.